Hello, everyone. My name is Tim B. Green, and this is Crush It Club, episode 61, Creativity Disability. So this episode was inspired by a number of things, not the least of which was, I have to resize my page here, not the least of which is um, what I did yesterday and a book I'm listening to now called A More Beautiful Question that I was led to by a previous book by Matthew E. May, which I've already done like seven videos on, um, called Winning the Brain Game. So this is the way things really work. It's pretty awesome if you sort of follow your creativity. So first of all, as I said in my last video, my condolences for your creativity disability of not having ADHD because ADHD, as much as it has cost and effort, social costs, learning challenges, and many other things, it also is essentially a creativity superpower, which some authors speculate was one of the reasons that da Vinci himself was the um, probably the greatest inventor in history. So I'm sorry you don't have ADHD, but there's still hope. And that is by emulating ADHD. So I can tell you about some of the behaviors, which if you're the parent of the teacher of, or have studied this enough, you know what these things look like. It's sort of the, usually the, the smart bad kid is the one with ADHD and they're not bad. It's just, they can't pay attention in the way you wish they could. So one of these, habits of ADHDers, ADDers is to chase shiny objects. If something gets your attention, it's actually desirable to chase that shiny object, okay? Chase that shiny object down that rabbit hole to see where it takes you and go as far as it takes you. Obviously, you can't do this all the time, but this is one way to really enhance your creativity. So the next one is pursue all curiosity. So this is related to changing the shiny objects. But just as an example, I'm going to summarize this because this is take two and it took too long last time. Getting interested from Saul Griffith's TED talk on kite surfing, learning to kite surf, not having enough money to drive to kite surfing locations because I don't have a car here in Japan led me to quad line kiting, led me to a solution that Alphabet, the parent company of Google, failed to achieve in something like eight or 10 years of trying to commercialize that kite power system. I found a solution because I went down the rabbit hole and I pursued my curiosity and my interest until I found a, an affordable recreation of quad line kiting, which I can do at the river near my house virtually any day of the week. So that's the kind of things that you can get out of that. Now, the other one is related to both of those, but not the same. And that is to wander aimlessly, not only chase shiny objects, but to wander aimlessly. So if you wind up doing something, you go, um, it's like, you know, window shopping or you're killing time, which is a bad thing, I think. Wander through ideas, wander through a dollar store, wander through whatever interests intellectually, but understand that you can do this aimlessly and just sort of gather ideas. And then, and then ultimately where you wanna go from there is if one idea really catches your eye from this wandering aimlessly through the internet, through books, through hobbies, whatever it happens to be, go into a crazy music festival then narrow your path and then go down the rabbit hole on that and see where it takes you and take it as far as it can. Where you're actually looking to arrive at is results. That is objective results. As you know, I'm a science geek if you watch any of these. Once you've got some results, then you can iterate if necessary, right? That is take it and restart or say, I've learned this, now what's the next step? Or maybe you arrived at a viable solution like I did for the kite power. My next step for that is building a social enterprise with somebody who has the resources and know-how to know that I'm not full of crap when I talk about it. Someone who knows that I know what I'm talking about. So Elon, 
you would be a perfect, perfect match for this. Um, so then the next one on my list, let's see here. Da, 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 okay. So the next one here is um, other long researched and tested creativity better practices. And I call them better practices as a nod to Adam Grant's uh, Think Again, which he currently encourages people to think like scientists. And he talks about best practices has the implicit assumption, the implicit arrogance of, oh, well, we can't improve on this practice, which of course is nonsense. Therefore, some better practices is, and I've talked about this before, this started with ESL, but it continues with many other things. Ask WH questions tirelessly, ceaselessly, any time you can imagine. And there's many examples I do not have time to go into. When I do the book review on a more beautiful question, I will focus a lot more on those questions. I focused on them before though. So ask WH questions about almost everything you can imagine. And then the next one is, when you're trying to create ideas, so after you've sort of identified a direction or you've identified a challenge you want to do, make some solutions on, then what you want to do is you want to do a private frame storm, then brainstorm. Now, a private frame storm is asking WH questions. Instead of jumping to the solutions you think you have, jump to the questions. So in other words, brainstorm questions. Ask as many questions as you can possibly think about that you might want to ask before looking at solutions. So you do a private brain frame storm first, that is asking questions, a question frame, uh, brainstorm, and then do a private brainstorm. Now keep all that stuff to yourself for the time being. We won't be able to get into the details of what you would do next with this, but this is a well-documented way to massively improve the diversity, creativity, quality, and number of options you have for brainstorms. The best brainstorms and frame storms start privately because social dynamics will influence and people will quiet their ideas because someone who's more alpha to them in the group said, well, I'm smarter than everybody and this is the way it goes. And unfortunately, we all listen to that. Either we're that person and we talk first and, and we should let other people talk first or not. But the bottom line is by having the private brainstorm, we're able to capture all the ideas, even from the quiet, shy people that could be world changing ideas. So in a group, private frame storm, private brainstorm, research back. I just love that. one. Now, for the third one in this particular area of this video, which is now almost over, is to tap into all individual and group genius. So that is all experiences and knowledge, right? I think origami is pretty cool. Not more of the boring crane stuff, but stuff like the muria, I think they're called muria patterns and some other things. I've used them in inventions. Um, anything, you take every experience you've ever had, bring it to the party. I don't care if you're crazy about knitting like my elder sister and my mom was, if you're crazy about cooking, bring everything you have into these kind of solution seeking sessions, all your experience, your personal experience and all of your knowledge that you've ever had is a potential source for the solution, a potential source for creativity, especially and or even if it seems totally irrelevant. Like, oh, well, what does medieval dancing have to do with anything? Well, it might have something to do with Okay, so don't, don't leave anything on the table. I have everybody bring all of their genius, all of their knowledge and creativity into the session. And every time you think, and, and this is sort of for myself, but I wanna share it with you too. Probably six months or a year ago, I thought I have a kick-ass system, which is better than anything else for learning, for doing online um, conferences, online Zoom calls, online workshops. And it probably was. And since then, multiple times over when I thought the system was finished and there was nothing else I could add to it, again and again, I find a new book, a new idea that is moves it to the next level. So think of yourself 
and your group and your creativity this way. We and our work are all masterpieces perpetually in the making. This has been Crush It Club episode 61, Creativity Disability. My name is Tim B. Green. Bye for now.